Thanks, Bob, and welcome to another Cast Iron Ranger. I'm Dan Brooks, and here with me today is Brent Bolton. Hey, Dan. Who's helped me in the past. Welcome. Thanks, Dan. I'm glad, glad to be here again. Yes. We're here at Coronado State Monument, um, and this is a place that preserves the historic ruins here in New Mexico, right off the uh, river in Bernalillo. Um, the ranger has actually given us a few shards here to look at that were found right here. Now I must tell you, don't you don't want to pick these up, but uh, he's let us use these for demonstration purposes. You can see these beautiful colors on this one, and the black the ranger tells us is indicative of cooking. So these shards were used over 600 years ago for cooking. Now Brent, you're going to help us today not with, uh, of course, his history, but instead the modern outdoor kitchen. These, uh, these ovens aren't quite 600 years old, yeah. but they have quite a bit of history yes. to Yes. Well, what's it take to get started in outdoor cooking? Well, what I wanted to show today is I wanted to show that with a minimal amount of, of equipment, you too can get started Dutch oven cooking in the great outdoors. Yes. Um, let, me, let me move this one Dutch oven out of the way for a moment. What I've got here, Dan, is simply a metal oil change pan. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's right. the, it doesn't get any simpler yeah. than that. And this gives you a containment to place your, your hot charcoal in to uh, then put your Dutch oven in and contain both the coals from getting away and also sure. contain your ash and whatnot from uh, making a mess. Right. So um, it kind of protects the environment. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, any anytime you are out cooking, you know, you want to you wanna provide for taking everything away. And that includes the, the spent charcoal and whatnot. You don't want to leave that mess for somebody else behind you. That's right. Pack it in, pack it out. That's right. At this point, you know, you've got your basic Dutch oven. We've got, we've got our lid here, and I've kind of set some charcoals on right. the lid, illustrating how you would put a ring of coals around the mm -hmm. top lid. This is a simple tool that's readily available in uh, different stores and whatnot that has a little grab action there. You can see how that goes yeah, up and down. right, the old lid so lifter. basically, yeah. you just get that little grab yeah. toe in the middle of the lid there, and when you squeeze, it holds on to the lid yeah. so that you've got a good grip on it. Right. That'll enable you to control it when you're setting it down on the Dutch oven to start your cooking. Right. Now that lid was sitting on, sitting on a, a gizmo here that, that's pretty handy. It's got a rivet right there in the center, uh -huh. and that enables this thing to collapse for, right, right. for taking up less space when you're, when you're traveling. So you open that out, and that's called a lid spider because it looks like... A spider. A spider, ah. that's right. So that lid spider serves the purpose of keeping the lid inside surface clean when you take it off the Dutch oven. You need a place to set it so that it stays right, clean. Right. It also uh, keeps from burning other things because you're going to have hot coals on that. Right. Well, and speaking of hot coals, you must have a way to handle these as well when they're hot. Simple, you know, a simple way maybe to handle that, Dan. You know, they make these little coal shovels that uh, are, are kind of handy. They're not too expensive. You can also get a simple pair of metal tongs that, that are easy to handle the charcoals oh. and move them around. and right. And... You know, they're pretty Manage dexterous, your heat. And, and they're they're inexpensive. You know, the whole point here is, you know, you don't have to spend a fortune to get cooking. Right. So, um, an old cutting board, you know, a lot of people oh, throw right. those away and, right. and uh, don't have much That's purpose for them. That's all there is to it. But uh, I like to save those, or, or a piece of plywood would work yeah. too. Right. To enable you, once you take this, this Dutch oven off the coals, and you're ready to put it on right. the table to serve, oh. it gives me a place to set that Dutch oven down so that I'm not going to melt my table. Right. Most of the tables that people use now like this today are, are plastic, and, and uh, that would be far too hot to set on a table like that. So right. that offers good protection. Yeah. Let's see, what else have we got here? Simple things, um, simple whisk broom. Yeah, we got you know, to keep it clean. And, yeah, for cleanup right. and whatnot. But probably one of the most important items is a good pair of long shank leather gloves. Welder's gloves work just fine. Right. But this enables you to, with a glove, to move your Dutch oven around if you need to without using a, a lifting tool, um, you know, just to, to give you that insulation you need to keep from getting burned. Right. So, you know, that's a pretty simple setup here. Yeah. So for a minimal amount of cost, uh, anybody can get started in a 
outdoor cooking. Absolutely. Well, that is a great setup for the basics. Now, if we were to get into this a little more and upgrade and go to a medium size outdoor cooking experience, how would we upgrade? Can you tell us that, Brent? Let's step over this way and I'll show you a little bit more involved setup here, Stepping Dan. Stepping over. What, we, what we've got here is we've got a, a, a table that's readily available for purchase that's already set up and made for Dutch oven cooking. All metal ah. and designed to put the coals, the charcoals, right on the table, right on the surface of the table. And then you simply place the Dutch oven on it. It's wide enough for two stations. The legs fold up, the windscreen comes off. It's got a carry bag, packs real nice for camping. Ah. Perfect setup for a hunter that yeah. wants to, to just take it out of the bag, set it up, and be ready to cook in 10, 15 minutes. So the person brings their cooking platform with them and is ready to go. That's right, that's right. Um, other ways to accessorize this, you don't have to use the windscreens. You know, if the wind's up, great. Mm -hmm. If not, you don't have to use them. Uh, simple charcoal starter, a chimney style charcoal starter works real well to uh, start your initial coals to get you going. Uh, the old trusty fire stick. Um, a simple and expensive coal shovel, fireplace yeah. shovel or whatnot right. works real well for scooping up coals and placing right. them on the lid of the Dutch oven. Um, a lot of times uh, people put hooks on these so they can hang them right off the yeah. side of the table. I can see that. Your, uh, your lid lifter, you know, if you have a hook on right. it, you can hang it where it's handy to get to to work with sure. your oven right there. Well, and I would imagine, too, once this is, you're done with this, you're going to have more room for cooking. Right. Two stations, and uh, it's not too much of a problem to put up to two 16-inch Dutch ovens um, on this particular setup. Without the windscreens, you can actually put larger ovens, and I, I have one oven that I don't think I'd want to put on here because it weighs about 160 pounds, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most people aren't going to need that much capacity. Now this also is conducive to cleanup, right? Because you have a little area you can actually sweep it off. Now they can't see that, but, but this works well for cleanup and let you manage your coals later when they cool? That's right, and the shovel works real great for that too, you know, to be able to... There's a cut in the back uh, corner here where you can just sweep all that right out the back corner, catch it in your right. shovel, and right. put it in a metal safety container sure. so that you can take your coals and your ashes with you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, Brent, tell us about this modern outdoor kitchen with your upgrades. Well, there's a lot of sizes of Dutch ovens. They go anywhere from little bitty baby here at about five inches all the way up to, this is a 14 inch. They make a 16 inch and I've even got some up to 22 inches that hold about 13 gallons. Yeah, now that sounds like bragging rights. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you can pick it up, I, I guess. You can cook it with it, huh? That's right, that's right. Dutch ovens are just like any workshop, Dan. You gotta pick the right tool for the right job. If you're gonna work on a car and it's metric, well, you use metric wrenches. Sure. When you're cooking for a family or a group or whatnot, you gotta figure out how much food do you need to fix and, and what's the proper size oven. You don't ever wanna use ovens that are they're tremendously too big because you're wasting a lot of heat and it won't necessarily cook the way you want it to cook. So you, you make sense. choices based on, on uh, what the project is, what size Dutch oven. Uh, average people, average family or so, a lot of people own a 12 inch. That seems to be a real common size. Some even have a little bit smaller size, a 10 inch. This is a 14 inch. I use 14 inch a lot, uh, as well as the 16 inch. This one actually has uh, an accessory in here that's available as a throwaway item. This is a preformed oh, right. aluminum liner. Yes, let me that, just, uh, let actually, I that. think we can just we can yeah, just lift that, that right out. Right. And that makes a real handy way to not have to clean an oven up. Right. You just drop that in, it fits in real nice, lid fits in real nice. And so if you've got something that's really messy or you want to do a dessert. Yeah. Uh, I, boy, I like that because that allows you to pull it out, maintain your crust. Oh yeah. Right. If you don't want to use a preformed liner, then just a plain old aluminum foil mm -hmm. and they've got a new non-stick variety that works really, really well. The little baby, let's start with the little baby here. I use the little baby a lot for melting butter. 
And, and when I've got my coals on top of a bigger Dutch oven, I'll put my butter in the little one and I'll just set it right over here off to the side and it'll melt my butter for a recipe or for a glaze or to brush top of my biscuits or whatnot. That makes it real handy. You've got anywhere from a five inch, they make a six inch, eight, uh, 10, 12, 14, right up down the line. Sure. So yeah. the, right, the right size for the right job. Uh, makes sense. What about some of this other stuff you got spread out here? Well. Basic tending tools, I prefer to use plastic utensils with my Dutch ovens. You get a good seasoning built up in that cast iron and sometimes if you get a little aggressive with, with metal spatulas and whatnot, you can scrape that seasoning and then you got a, you got a spot you got to work back on again. So by using plastic, uh, my personal preference is, is that just keeps your seasoning safe. Um, you know, the normal kitchen type goodies, tongs, for turning over chicken or whatever you want to do in your oven there. A uh, whisk for mixing up batches, different sizes of ladles for serving and whatnot. Uh, good cutting boards. Um, I like, the, uh, I like the, food, the food grade uh, plastic ones because they're really easy to clean up and they're not susceptible sure. to, to cracking and water yeah. when you're out camping and whatnot. They, they stay pretty good no matter what happens to yeah. them. All right, and moving on, then just a few other basics to A few to other help basics, cook. good rolling pin, a wood cutting board for cutting, you know, meats and whatnot on, basic supplies. One of the things that I think is probably as important as anything in a good outdoor kitchen is a good source of potable water. You need that water for not only cleaning up your utensils and whatnot, but for keeping your hands clean and, and uh, not contaminating your food. I've got a plastic, uh, plastic jug here that has a, a valve out here on the end that you can turn open and closed to be able to dispense water as you need it. Um, I think it's really important also to have a good catch basin underneath your water supply so that you don't turn the, uh, turn the kitchen into a, a, a mud, mud pit here, you know, and make a mess. So I just use a, I just use a stainless steel bowl to uh, catch the overflow on the water and that way we don't have a mess on the ground. Yeah, well thanks Brent. Um, I really like this setup, uh, and you've got to see everything from the basic setup to just get started to a little more elaborate to, to cooking for family and friends. So that's just um, a, a great bunch of ideas for people to get started. That's what it's all about. And thanks for bringing everything except your kitchen sink. <laughs> Appreciate that. You're welcome, Dan. <laughs>